The purpose of this video is to further educate orthoptic students about performing the clinical test tear breakup time. TBUT is a clinical test used to determine the amount of time it takes for the tear film to evaporate. It is done by measuring the interval between the last blink and the appearance of the first dry spot in the tear film. It is used to assess for any dry eye disease. To understand the principles of the tear butt test, it is essential to understand the importance of the tear film. Every time we blink, a coating of tears is spread over the front of our eye called the tear film. It is made up of three layers an oil layer, a water layer and a mucin layer. The tear film protects and lubricates the eye, reduces the risk of infection, washes away foreign particles and keeps the surface of the eye smooth and clear. To test an individual's tear film stability, the T-butt test is performed. Throughout the T-butt examination, the following equipment will be used. Local anaesthetic eye drops, which are used to prevent any discomfort caused by the installation of fluorescein dye. Fluorescein strips, which are used to instill fluorescein dye into the eye. The dye covers the anterior surface of the eye, making it easier to view any dry spots appearing in the tear film. And lastly, the slit lamp, which is used to view a larger and clearer image of the eye and tear film making it easier to view any appearing dry spots. Hi Jane, I'm Sarah and I'll be your orthoptist for today. Today we're just going to be measuring your tear film layer and how long it takes for your tear film to break up. Before beginning the assessment, the orthoptist will wipe the head bar and chin rest of the slit lamp with a disinfectant wipe and then will perform hand sanitisation. I'll just get you to pop your glasses off for me. Yep. And put your chin against the chin rest and forehead against the bar. Okay. Next, the orthoptist will turn on the slit lamp and adjust it to a suitable height for the patient using the chin rest knob and the table lever. She will also adjust the eyepieces to her required IPD and magnification to suit her refractive error. Next, the orthoptist will adjust the slit lamp settings to a broad beam. She will then switch the light setting to a cobalt blue filter. This filter allows for easier viewing of the fluorescein dye. Next, she will adjust the angle of the illuminating arm at about 45 degrees so that the whole cornea is illuminated. Once the slit lamp is set up, the orthoptist will then commence safe administration of anaesthetic eye drops and will explain to the patient what they will experience. I'm just going to put some anaesthetic drops in your eye. Okay. Now they may sting a little bit when I drop them in, mm -hmm. but you won't feel any pain and okay. your eye may feel a little bit heavy. Okay. Next, she will take the lid off the bottle, making sure not to put it down on any surface to prevent any contamination. Just get to the she will then ask the patient to tilt their head backwards and to look up, while she gently pulls down their lower lid. She will then instill one drop of local anaesthetic into the lower fornix of one eye. Tilt your head back and looking up at the ceiling for me. She will then reseal the bottle cap immediately and ask the patient to close their eyes and apply pressure for 1-2 to two minutes over the point where their eyelids meet the nose. This nasolacrimal occlusion will prevent any of the drop entering the rest of the body. Can you just apply some pressure to the bridge of your nose? And here's a tissue for anyone. 
Once the anesthetic drops have been instilled, the orthoptist will then apply the fluorescein dye. The orthoptist will commence by unwrapping the fluorescein strip, making sure not to touch the orange tip. She will then ask the patient to tilt their head backwards while pulling down their lower lid. The orthoptist will then gently place the orange tip of the strip onto the patient's lower eye near the lid. This will allow the dye to be released from the strip. It is important not to sweep or slice the strip on the patient's eye to prevent any damage or scarring. The orthoptist will hold the strip here for a few seconds, then gently remove it. If it appears that only a small amount of fluorescein was released into the eye, you may need to add a drop of anaesthetic to the tip of the strip and repeat the previous steps. Once the fluorescein dye has been applied, you may ask the patient to blink a few times to ensure that the fluorescein is dispersed throughout the patient's eye. Once the fluorescein has been applied, the patient is now ready to be examined by the slit lamp. The slit lamp examination is done under dim lighting conditions to allow better view of the tear film. The orthoptist will commence by using the joystick to focus the image of one eye. Once the eye is focused, the patient will be asked to blink, then hold their eye open until instructed to stop. Okay, can you take one big blink for me? Mm -hmm. And then hold your eye open for as long as you can. Try to resist the urge to blink. The orthoptist will then observe the eye through the microscope while measuring the time in seconds it takes for the first appearance of a dark spot on the patient's cornea. Once the first dark spot is observed, the orthoptist will stop counting and record this as the T-bite result. To keep the patient relaxed, it is important not to count the seconds out loud. It is very hard to clearly video record the dry spots on camera. However, as you can see here, dark spots and streaks have appeared in the right corner of the patient's tear film after just 4 seconds. As more seconds go by, greater evaporation of the tear film can be observed. Once you have measured the T-butt of one eye, you must follow the previous steps and test the other eye. In regards to today's patient, the results of the T-butt test are as follows. Right eye, 4 seconds. Left eye, 5 seconds. The normal measurements of T-butt are anything greater than 10 seconds is normal. Anything less than 10 seconds is abnormal. Both eyes here show a very short tear breakup time of less than 10 seconds, indicating an unstable tear film. Tear film instability can often result due to extensive computer use, infrequent blinking, aging, menopause, arthritis, lack of sleep, exposure to wind and dust, cold weather, the use of contact lenses, air conditioned environments and the use of certain medications. Tear film instability will result in dry eye symptoms, such as stinging or burning of the eyes, grittiness, pain and redness of the eye, episodes of blurred vision, uncomfortable contact lenses, eye fatigue, and trouble reading and working on the computer. There is treatment and management options available for individuals with dry eye and tear film instability, such as tear substitutes with a variety of eye drops and gels, a change in contact lenses, a reduction in room temperature, or a reduction in air conditioning and heating use. The advantages of the T-butt test include, it is reproducible, it is easy to perform, it is a common test performed in clinic, and it enables the clinician to clearly see the tear film evaporating. The disadvantages of the T-butt test include, there is a possible time lag between the first spot in the tear film and the observer noticing it. There could also be an uneven mixing of fluorescein in the tear film, which can affect the results. And the test is a little invasive. Some patients may find it uncomfortable. And that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for listening.